Okay, welcome to uh, Lord of Patriarchy. I don't know why the fuck my lights are not working properly and why I'm so goddamn dark, but whatever. This is an article I've had. Uh, it was wrote on Medium, which basically anyone can write on. Five bold ways white male allies can step up against racism. So now she's at least specifically talking to, I'm assuming, cis, straight, white males, because we're apparently still the evil oppressor, despite the fact that she's still free to buy blue hair dye. The nice thing about being an inclusion expert is that what I get to see both uh, the best and the worst of human behavior. Witnessing the extremes gives rise to gratitude in the face of folks really working to do right by others. It's from these this place that I have been fortunate to enjoy close relationships, including one failed marriage, with white men who sought to be allies. I have news for you, lady. If you show me actual ex examples of real racism, I shall be your ally in this fight. However, you're going to need proof to provide evidence for the claim. I also do not believe that the country is systemically racist because we just got done with having eight years of a black man in the most powerful office in the land. Um, white male allies exist in all walks of life. It's the one who moved beyond the basic status of passive ally and involved into intentional accomplices and conscious co-conspirators. What conspiracy? The conspiracy would be a cabal of white men who do nothing all day, every day, except, except keep black people down. Well, I have news for you. They don't exist. These suggestions are applicable to white people of all genders so they don't feel excluded by the title. I've chosen to speak to white men because they occupy the seat of power. Really? It seems black people have gotten on the Supreme Court, in the Senate, in Congress, in the office of the presidency. There's black CEOs, black lawyers, black federal judges, black state judges, black state Supreme Court justices, a myriad of black governors and state senators and representatives, or whatever the fuck they call themselves in their particular state. Seems like we have black mayors all over, including in cities that are burning to the ground at the moment. Uh, seems that there is not a, uh, it seems a large swath of entertainment is dominated by black people. The biggest music genre of them all, rap, is, what, 98% black? Maybe 95? I mean, like it or not, I mean, I don't like rap, but numbers are numbers. Anyway, you should also, um, okay, so, you can make donation to charities and foundation, but you should also make choices that affect black folks a lot closer to home and much more personally. Whether it's you who seeks guidance about how to show up for black, indigenous, and people of color, by the way, that people of color label excludes Asians because they're making more money than white people. Uh, or you aspire to influence a white man in your life, here are a few next-level examples of what to do. Embrace your privilege. Well, considering I don't have white male privilege, it's a thing that does not exist except in your racist mind. So there's nothing for me to embrace. And yes, despite what the corn cob said... Black people can be racist, and white people can experience racism. This article is a racist article. All of us have privilege, not just cis het white men. However, white men often have particular types of unearned privilege that accelerate. Really, you might want to talk to the people living in trailer parks eating turtles in West Virginia. That accelerate and ease their path to success. No, there is no easy path th to success. It requires a lot of hard work and sacrifice. Um, the good news is embracing your privilege versus being ashamed of it or feigning degrees of denial allows you access to new levels of service and humanity. This isn't for individualistic, selfishly minded person. Well, 
Sorry, I'm individualistic and selfishly minded. If you're in a competition with me and you're on fire, I wouldn't piss on you to put you out. Uh, oh, with no empathy for humanity. No, I have plenty of empathy, but just not for bullshit problems that you people tend to cry about. And I don't mean black people. I mean social justice warrior, activist, asshole, douchebag, asshole, fuckfaces. Um, so, okay. Welcome back to the family. We're glad you're here. Now, what does she want me to do? Share the wealth. So I'm supposed to give you my money. No. Unless you come over to my house every day and blow me, I'm not giving you shit. Or provide a service that I require. I am not giving you shit. Any sharing of actual money can be in the form of reparation. Oh my god. Can be a form of reparations. Yeah, looting is reparations. And wealth redistribution. Wealth redistribution is a form of socialism, and socialism always ends badly. Reparations are a bold yet appropriate choice. There are many ways you can accomplish this. Scalable to your level of income and access, you can. Oh, what can I do? Sponsor someone's private school or college tuitions with no string attached. I don't like paying taxes for public schools at the moment because I don't have any kids. Why the fuck should I pay for some little brat to go to a public school? So I'm sure as shit not going to give you money for your kid's private school. That's your problem. You're the mom. Make a down payment on someone's home. No. Something you didn't work for, you will not appreciate and you will destroy. This is why Section 8 housing is so shitty. Co-sign for something you can buy outright and be prepared to pick up the tab if someone hits on tough times. No, I am not going to buy you a car. Invest in a, basically, people of color business. If I think the business can be, give me a return on my money, then sure, I'll invest. If I think it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of, then no, I'm not going to. Schedule events at black-owned venues and hire black vendors. If the event that is the best location happens to be black-owned, I'll... I will schedule my event there. If, however, it's white-owned, I'll schedule it there. As for the vendors, if the black vendors give me the best price, I will hire them. If the white vendors give me the best price, I will hire them. I am worried more about the color green than black or white. Start a trust fund for a black child or person of color. If they are related to me in some way, maybe. If they're not, no. If you aren't pulling in six plus figures, odd that she thinks the average white man pulls in six plus figures, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Intentionally purchase people of color owned products or services. I don't care. If it happens to be one of them, fine. If it doesn't, whatever. Research and support black owned businesses. No. Promote those businesses to your network. No. Actually, no, I take that back. If they do a good job and provide the best service for what I need, I will happily promote them. Or if they pay me, I will promote them. Gift a family or person of color business, streaming service, subscriptions, Wi-Fi, and or Wi-Fi devices. No! Build a relationship with local community center, find out what folks need, and use your resources and connections to help. But if those folks happen to be white folks, I guess fuck them. Putting your money on the line for black folks communicates clearly that you understand the implication of our shared racist history. That racist history ended a long time ago, that's why it's history. And are willing to restore balance within your sphere of influence. It is balanced right now. Black people have the exact same opportunities that white people do. It has more to do with your work ethic, lady, than anything else. And don't get me wrong, reparations need to happen. Okay. What about black people that sold black people into slavery? What about black people that have white blood in them? What about black people that uh, came from places like Jamaica or Cuba? 
Yeah, because you, you know you know what's really funny? All these pseudo socialist communist dickheads on on Twitch and YouTube, and they're wearing their little Che Guevara T-shirt, and they're saying what a piece of shit I am. Yeah, you know that guy was unbelievably racist. Um, to Cubans who happen to be darker skinned. So yeah, no reparations are the dumbest thing ever. The nobody alive today was ever a slave. Nobody alive today ever owned a slave. You cannot feel your ancestral pain. So shut the fuck up. The reason that you have been in generational poverty has a fuck of a lot more to do with you than anything else. Okay? You can break the cycle. It will require some hard work, but you can do it. Because, you know, before the welfare state, the black community was actually generating wealth. By quite a good magnitude, at a quite a good clip. Home ownership, car ownership, moving up the ladder, and then the welfare state happened. You can check. Um anyway, share your access. My access to what? I sit on the Council of Patriarchal Lords. Believe it or not, we um we do have some black guys on there. Anyway, uh, my access to what? I, I'm not going to let you in the Council of Patriarchy. Sorry, blue-haired, weird feminists, they don't get in. Many people don't realize how much access they have until something causes them to think about it, like losing said access. I have had access to countless rooms, gathering resources, info, because some white male co-conspirator saw fit to hold the door open. Well, I hate to bring this up, but everybody helps. Through your life, you are going to need help at times, and it'd be nice if you had some favors to call in. But do you think they held the door open for you because you're a black woman? Well, I, think, I think she's actually a lesbian. A black lesbian? Or did they hold the door open because they thought that you were the most qualified or the best candidate? Why why is it that that I I love this this just this oh god what is it called god the fucking social justice warriors uh the um the the internalized racism of the white savior complex like you're literally saying in this article that you're too fucking stupid and weak and worthless and whatever so you need a white man like me to come in and save you and hold the door open for you and show you the way and help you along. Why don't you have some self-respect for your goddamn self and say, no, fuck that. I can do it myself. Jesus Christ, this victim mentality is just gone fucking terminal. I mean, she's literally saying... I'm a black woman, so I'm too weak, stupid, whatever, so I need a white man to help me th for my entire life. Well, here's a thought. If that's the, the way you need, need it, sweetheart, either marry a black, or, or either marry a white man or a white woman, and then you might have that. <sighs> okay, so this is what I have to do to help her gain entry into spaces. Memberships and guest memberships to country clubs, businesses, business networks, arts, sports, and entertainment venues. Okay. You don't need my help to get those memberships. You can simply pay the membership fee. As for country clubs, I will never help you get into there because I find golf fucking boring. Arts? You pay the museum admission fee. Sports, you pay the ticket price. Entertainment venues. Again, the largest genre of music in the world of music is rap. And if you throw an R&B, it's even bigger. And it's predominantly dominated by black people. 
But here's the thing. If you want to go to a death metal concert, which is largely dominated by white dudes, um, come on in. Have a beer. We'll teach you how to headbang. You'll have a sore ass neck in the morning, but we can show you how to do it. I wouldn't advise you getting into the mosh pit because you're probably about 120 pounds. And there's guys in there that are smashing into each other that are like 280. So, but if you do get knocked down, everyone will help you get back up. But I would just maybe skip the mosh pit part. Anyway, uh, seats on the board of directors, advisory boards, community councils, and committee. Uh, get that yourself. Introductions to investors, advisors, and other anti-racist accomplices. <sighs> If someone wants to invest in your business and give you money, do you really give a rat's ass what they personally feel? Also, you are aware that not all people on Shark Tank are white. Introductions to potential clients and customers. No, you run your own business. Referrals, endorsements, and letters of recommendation. No, not unless I believe they can actually do the job. Sponsorship beyond mentorship. Uh, actively supporting a person of color's growth trajectory. Mentioning candidates in closed-door session when they aren't in the room. Suggesting them for high-profile opportunity. That's not really sponsorship. That's me sitting there going, who the fuck can we get to direct this movie we're rolling the dice on? The fate of the company. Oh, I know. I know this black lesbian director. She'd be perfect for it. No, I'm going to go with the best person I think can do the job. Jesus Christ. Share your knowledge. You would not like the knowledge I have to pass on to you. But I will happily share it with you. I will happily, to the author of this article, I will happily have a discussion with you about how racist it is and about how it's it's not white men's job, it's not white people's job, it's not anyone's job to help you get ahead except for one person, you. You. Can I guess how I learned to price my consulting... Oh, God, you're a consultant. So that means you make no money. A white man in a similar but non-competitive industry taught me. How did I learn about the benefit B Corp structure in a random southern city? A white attorney volunteering at a non-profit lunch and learn introduced me to B Corps at a critical inflection point of my business. When did I stop giving away my time to folks who just wanted to pick my brain? Again, I uh, I proffer a conversation. Nothing more than that. And no, I'm not going to give you a dime. Um, I started charging for the paid consultations in advance of a contract after a white male friend introduced me to the idea. Okay, not to be mean, but it seems like you didn't know the first thing in business. Never would have dawned on me to charge before someone became a client until my friend clued me into this common business practices. Okay. I just had and lost in a few days a Patreon at the $15 level. Now, I don't know if you didn't get the concept of Patreon, which I might set up a subscribe star because they do have this, this function. But... His, he, like, he didn't really get the, con and, and maybe he was just nervous, because, you know, I, I don't want to out this person. They, they did, but he pulled his patronage in, like, a week. And, you know, my deal is, you have to be around at the end of the month, or I don't get paid, and if I don't get paid, I don't do your video. You know, occasionally I'll, I'll throw one up, you know, to a to a friend or to a longtime subscriber or something. But 
you know, I'm, you know, and uh, to uh, to one of my patrons, and I did email you. Get uh, get your um, your uh, request in pronto. Um. So, no, I mean. Yeah, no, if, if you want me to appear, you can pay me. Like, it doesn't have to be the entire amount, but a retainer fee is common business practice. Anyway, um, these examples may seem inconsequential at first glance. The truth is that I have been privileged throughout my career to access to white business people willing to pull back the curtain and show me that the wizards who pull the string of our capitalist racist economy aren't magical to look at. They put on their underwear one leg at a time and look goofy doing it just like the rest of us. Yeah, our economy is not racist, but it is capitalist. And that's a good thing, because everyone thrives under it. Demystify the delusion of white supremacy. Okay. This is my favorite accomplice action. I love this because it encourages white people to disturb their precious white equilibrium and violate the racial status quo. You're 13% of the population. If anything, especially in entertainment, you're overrepresented. Tell POC folks around you what is happening behind closed doors. Validate their experiences, fears, concern, and hunches that racism is alive and well and do not shy away from naming the examples you've seen and how you failed to disrupt them or succeeded. The country is not systemically racist. Okay? Again, we just got through this guy as president, Barack Hussein Obama. And people voted for him not once, but twice. I voted for him the first time. Because I was worried that, uh, who the fuck ran against him? Um... Ah, oh, the guy that uh, died. Uh, that guy. Uh, blanket on the fucking name. But the reason was is I didn't know if he could deal with the stress of the job. And then I didn't want Sarah Palin to get into office because I didn't want President Avon Lady. But I thought Barack Obama did a shitty job in his four years. So when Mitt Romney comes around, and I'm also notorious for not voting for the incumbent. Uh, I had to vote for Mitt Romney, which was like voting for a bowl of mayonnaise. Anyway, racism persists because we can be conditioned to accept and ignore it. Fortunately, the tide is shifting. Is there anything else to this article? Oh, I love this. My white presenting co-author. Ashley Diaz Menaz, Menaz, Miaz, anyway, to push me past my own internalized depression. No, you still have it. You still think white men need to open doors for you. No, they don't. In fact, the best way to deal with a locked door, kick that motherfucker down. And better yet, use someone's face to do it. Now I can scarcely imagine a reality in which I'm not voicing my opinions, my observation on the reality of racism to anyone with an internet-enabled device or penchant for books. These ideas are not rocket science. No, they're not because they don't exist. We are talking about empathy. Empathy is a lie. Kindness. Kindness is overrated. Human decency, generosity, self-awareness. Why is it my job to be generous? No, I, I don't care. I I, I I I guess maybe this is why I always want it Monopoly. Because I'm a greedy motherfucker. Self-awareness, social accountability, community, love, and interconnectedness. 
Okay, I don't give a rat's ass about my community. Love is a largely nebulous term. And interconnectedness. Yes, we all, to a point, are interconnected. But here's the thing. If you're my rival in, in an endeavor, like if you're a fellow Twitch streamer, and if it means that it gets me more Twitch... If I gotta fucking run you over, if it gets me more Twitch streamers or Twitch fans, I'll do it. I don't care. Part of life is a competition. Life is not everybody just sitting around a fucking hippie drum circle smoking pot singing kumbaya fucking ya. There is a competition to life. And there's a competitiveness to human nature. This is why you are not ahead. And this is why you needed lessons in basic business acumen. If you are a faith-driven, I'm not. Read your sacred texts. Don't have any. This level of concern for the underappreciated and misunderstood is covered in all of them. Even if your only aspiration is to seize the day, your day will be more fulfilling and purpose purposeful if you embrace the opportunity to lift up your fellow human beings at every opportunity. I will do so, but I would like some benefit in doing so. Like, you can call me fucking selfish, but if I invest money into somebody's business, I'd like a return on my investment. Sorry, I'm not running a fucking charity here. By the way, this is why Disney has basically told the social justice warriors to fuck off. In rumor. 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 These are decisions we look on back as we draw our final breaths and know that we have done well. Well, most of us are usually have been driven clinically insane by that point. So I don't think we'll care. And considering I don't think we have anything coming after... How about you just grab as much shit for yourself as you possibly fucking can? Anyway, that wraps up this motherfucker. And basically, she is a non-binary, best-selling author, bias hunter, B Corp founder, TEDxInc.com. By the way, TEDx has nothing to do with TED Talks. Uh, skier, pleasure activist... Blue-haired maverick. What the fuck is a pleasure activist? Like, are you fighting for the rights of the riding crop that your girlfriend slaps on your pussy? Uh, okay, but whatever. Anyway, that wraps up this motherfucker. <laughs>